Welcome to Beyond the Garden Gate. We visited the Nashua Historical Society for their Arbor Day celebration. Guest speaker Jonathan New of the University of New Hampshire Cooperative Extension presented the society with a certificate for the beautiful black walnut tree adorning their property. This black walnut tree holds the distinct honor of being the second largest in the state. The Society's motto, Preserving the Past for the Future, certainly rings true with this magnificent specimen, approximately 150 years old. Other events during the day included children's activities and tours of both museums. And for all of those who attended a special gift from the State Nursery in Boscowan, free balsam seedlings ready for planting. Now come along and enjoy today's trip beyond the garden gate. Hello, this is Linda Temperino and we are at the Nashua Historical Society today on Arbor Day and we are here to talk about the museum itself. This is the Nashua Historical Society on Abbott Street and this is Beth McCarthy, she's the curator of the museum. How long have you been the curator, Beth? Well, this marks my 20th year here oh my goodness. working with the collection within our two museums. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. The name of this building is? The Florence Spear Memorial Museum, and our Abbott Spaulding House Museum is out on to the left of this building. Okay. And this building was named after again, Florence Spear, Spear, who was the first wife of Siva Spear, a very philanthropic individual. He gave to several uh, New Hampshire nonprofits throughout the state. He was an older man, and this is the last uh, nonprofit that he was philanthropic towards of his life. And they were affiliated with the Spear, Spear, Dry, Spear Goods Dry Goods store, which Goods. was on Main Street. They also had a sister store in Haverhill. Yeah, very interesting. Tell me about the Abbott Spaulding House. The Abbott Spaulding House is a museum that dates to 1802, which is when it was built. It has grown over time and changed with the uh, over time in terms of what was in fashion for Victorian era, what was in fashion for colonial era, and it is what it is. It's a real prize of a house museum. And it is open to the public when? Uh, by appointment and on our opening days. And when is the museum, the Historical Society building open? Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays from 10 to 4, and by appointment in all other times. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Nashua Historical Society Arbor Day celebration. What I'd like to do is introduce the forester. What a lovely day to talk about trees here in New Hampshire. What a lovely day to come out. Talk a little bit about Arbor Day first, because this is a uniquely United States institution. Of course, the first Arbor Day was 1872 in Nebraska, inspired by J. Sterling Morton, a local farmer and industrialist, okay. But in 1886, New Hampshire had its first Arbor Day, all right? In New Hampshire, it's always the last Friday in April, which is yesterday. But we're here today because it's a Saturday. Everybody could come out and visit. But in New Hampshire, we've had an Arbor Day in New Hampshire since 1886. And of course, planting trees in the United States has always been a big deal. You remember George Washington and Thomas Jefferson were avid tree planters. As a matter of fact, you can visit their homes now, their national parks, Mount Vernon and Monticello. And you can see some of the trees that, Mount, that George Washington and Thomas Jefferson planted, and they're huge now. They're wicked. They're wicked big. They're big, big trees. But it's just, it's humbling to touch those trees that those early colonial founders planted themselves uh, back on, on their properties. Talking about the trees today, I gotta tell you, I was a little disappointed this morning. Because I was speaking with my wife, I says, I'm gonna go down to Nashua and look at the biggest tree, black walnut tree in Hillsborough County. Would you like to come? And she says, no. So I'm pleased that so many of you folks took an interest in trees and like to look at this beauty behind me. Isn't it lovely? Look at this tree. Isn't it incredible? There are three big tree lists in New Hampshire. Run by the New Hampshire Big Tree Program, Carolyn Page is a volunteer coordinator. 
go on the computer, extension.unh.edu, and you can get the link to that. That's all listed right there, and there are three lists. The one this one is on is the New Hampshire Big Tree List, 22 pages of big trees in New Hampshire, okay? The other one is the New Hampshire Introduced Tree List, and that's for, like, flowering crab and ginkgo, things that wouldn't normally be grown here unless you didn't plant them on your own. That's only three pages long. And then there's the National List. There's another thing called the American Forest Foundation that, that sponsors the whole national program of big tree celebrations, and they have their list as well. So you can look at what the biggest sequoia is, the biggest bristlecone pine, you know, that kind of stuff. So there are three lists on the computer, check them out. But the list for this one here is 22 pages long. This is the largest black walnut in Hillsborough County, and it's based on three things, tree diameter, tree height, and average crown spread, okay? The diameter of this tree is 50 inches in diameter, more than four feet in diameter, a sheet of plywood, four feet wide. This is bigger than that. Isn't that incredible? The height is 86 feet tall, okay? The crown spread is 88 feet across. Isn't that amazing for this tree here? It's in beautiful health. I was worried, I tell you, when I came down, because remember, two years ago, we had that Halloween ice storm. It was just horrible on these big oaks and big hundreds like this with limbs. This tree came through very nicely. I'm really, really pleased the way it came through. So your question is, okay, if this is the third biggest black walnut in New Hampshire, where are the other two? Well, the, the next biggest one is in Deerfield, New Hampshire, and the largest tree is in Hopkinton, New Hampshire. That tree has a, you remember I said this one had a diameter of 50 inches? The Hopkinton tree has a diameter of 56.6 inches. So this has room to grow. We'll, we'll catch up. We'll be all right. There are four members of the walnut family, the Juglanese family in New Hampshire. The black walnut, of course, the butternut tree, okay, shagback hickory and pignut hickory are all within that Juglanese family, okay, in New Hampshire. Now, this is, you can eat black walnut nuts if you want, okay, but usually in the store, the ones you're buying are the Carpathian walnuts or maybe the English walnut because those have been cultivated, they're a little bit larger, but you can eat these if you want. The, uh, the native tree, of course, is the butternut. And back in the old days, in the colonial days, in the Civil War era, all the old farms had a butternut on their property. Because the husks of this black walnut around have a very, very spicy sort of smell to them to get down to the nut. But the husk of the butternut tree is oval, like, like a football shape, and, and yellow, but very, very sticky. And it exudes a, a, a dye, a yellow dye. You just can't wash off your hands. And so the old farmers in the old days used to gather the, the, nuts, the, the husks from the butternut trees, and in the fall or in the springtime when, when they sheared their sheep, they dye the sheep wool. And, they, and you've seen the wool with kind of a, a light yellow, kind of brownish color to it. That's where they got the dye for that and everything. Not so with the black walnut. The black walnut's for wildlife, for your juice, for the lovely shape of the tree, that sort of thing. Now, where the black walnut grows naturally out in Illinois and Indiana, they are an incredibly valuable timber tree used by artisans, furniture makers, and that sort of thing. Uh, for real fancy construction, like, like courtrooms and public buildings, they have matched walnut siding, that sort of thing. That's what those trees go for. We don't use that so much here in New Hampshire because we're at the very, very northern range of the black walnut tree. And so the trees here, instead of going straight and tall limb-free, our trees tend to be fairly short and real limby. Okay? So yes, it's true artisans use the lumber from these trees, but usually artisans I'm talking about, we use just one or two boards to make a cabinet. Or, and so it's hard to have an industry to use black walnuts in New Hampshire that's different from our white pine or our red oak, which really dominate all the time. So yes, they're valuable trees, but it's, kind of, it's a real niche market. It's hard to market that. Questions on black walnut before I go off that topic? Okay, good. Yes? Is it a fruit-bearing tree, or is it strictly ornamental? Well, again, the, the, the nuts. The nut, we call the nuts fruit because they have a, a, a round husk with a round nut inside. You break the nut open, you've got the meat for the walnut you can eat inside. So, yes, it's a nut. As a matter of fact, some people look at it more as an ornamental, and the nuts as being a nuisance, quite honestly, particularly if it's under a parking lot or something because they bonk your car. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I, I look at it both ways because, again, in these urban environments, the wildlife habitat's important as well, and of course the squirrels and, and, and the blue jays and, and that sort of thing, they love these nuts as well. So you, you get the best of both. The only thing it doesn't do is it doesn't have distinctive flowers to look at. So it's not like a crab apple. We have those lovely flowers in the springtime, 
and then the fruit all summer long. This has the beautiful shape, size, but in the nuts as well. You do need to give this a lot of room. This is going to be a really signature tree on your property. So if you plant a walnut on your property, it's going to be huge like this. So you don't want to crowd them. You need a big, big park-like area. Put that walnut there. It's going to really dominate that site. It really will. So don't, don't crowd them together. All right? And they are planted. We usually don't find uh, black walnuts naturally in New Hampshire. They usually are planted from other areas. All right? How long does it take? Well, how long does it take? I'm guessing the average black walnut tree has to mature before it makes the nuts. So I'm guessing 15, 16, 17 years it might start producing nuts. And I'm guessing the age of this tree, I think it's post-Civil War, post-1865. So I'm thinking this tree is around 150 years old, but not much more than that. And the reason I'm saying that is forest trees grow slowly because they're in the woods with all the shade. But the trees out here in the open landscape like this, they, they really grow quickly. They really add a lot of diameter growth because they get so much of a big top to them. So sometimes it's deceptive. You'll see a sycamore, for example, that's a real huge tree. But because it grows so well out in the open like this with the lawn and everything else, very often they're not quite as old as you think they would be. Okay? Questions on that? One last thing I want to talk about before I leave today is that very, very quickly, we've had some bug problems in New Hampshire with trees and things. And I just want to alert you, the, the bug of concern today is called emerald ash borer, E-A-B. And unfortunately, uh, we just found it two weeks ago in Concord, New Hampshire, up here in Concord. It's uh, in the city itself, but more importantly, it's along the floodplain. And the trees we're looking at, it appears the bug has been there for three, maybe four years. So it's been there a while. We don't know how it got here. Originally, it came from Asia in, in a, a, a wood crating for industry. But it does move in firewood. If people move firewood around, it's in the firewood branches as well. So there's a bug, very, very small bug, makes a hole in the tree, that lays an egg, that matures in a very, very small larvae, very, very small. It girdles underneath the bark, back and forth and back and forth. So one bug is not a problem. But if you have a lot of bugs on the tree, those back and forth galleries under the bark are going to link together. And they'll choke off the flow of sap up and down the tree and kill it that way. So these are lethal to American ash, and only ash, only ash trees, thank goodness. But it's a real problem. Uh, they first found them out, out west. Now they found them, again, two weeks ago in, in, in Concord, New Hampshire. So stay tuned. We have a special website, New Hampshire, nhbugs.org. nhbugs.org will tell you anything you want to know about emerald ash borer. But it's just, it's just very, very disappointing. Very disappointing. As a matter of fact, all the forests like myself, we're talking about Asian longhorn beetle, emerald ash borer, hemlock woolly adelgid. We were hoping to call these AMR bugs after my retirement. <laughs> but the darn bugs have caught up to us, and now we have to be vigilant. Okay? I've got a, a, a nice certificate to award. Uh, Vinny Renzi and Judith Jones, come up, please. Each tree that's measured in New Hampshire, and it's one of the largest trees in New Hampshire, we see it goes in an inventory, it's all computerized, and so this is the register for this lovely black walnut behind me from the New Hampshire Big Tree Program. Judith and Vinzi, I'm proud to present to you recognition, the largest black walnut in Hillsborough County, the third largest black walnut in the state of New Hampshire, a very healthy black walnut, long may it wave. How's that? We hope so. <laughs> there you go. That's Thank yours. you very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate and you as well, Judith. Congratulations. That uh, uh, concludes my part of the ceremony. The Historical Society has acquired free balsam fir seedlings to give to you, anyone that wants them. They're from the State Forest Nursery. Uh, go to nhnursery.com and go to their website. They're available to buy if you want. But they have free seedlings. Judith is over there. So at your leisure today, before you leave, swing by. She'll give you a free balsam fir seedling if you like. All right. And we also have two arborists in the back, fellas. Raise your hands. Besides myself, if you have any questions about your trees or shrubs, uh, well, trees ask me questions. Shrubs ask those guys questions. <laughs> and we'd be glad to talk to you after ceremony. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for coming out today. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I'm standing here with the Ted Says, Ted, Ted Says from Seiko and Kevin Fredette. from Fredette's Gate City, Gate City Tree. 
and they're going to be doing all the maintenance on these wonderful trees all around this entire property. What other trees do they have here on this property other than this glorious walnut? Well, you have a you have an ash tree over on the corner. You got plenty of flowering crabs. Uh, Ted and I, uh, last year, we uh, donated a couple trees on the other side, sugar maples. sugar maples. You got a black walnut over here. That is another black walnut? I believe that is. Yeah. Wow. Over here, you got a white birch. On the corner down there, Ted, there's a horse chestnut. American horse chestnut, one of, the, one, of the, one of the finest in the city. The other one is up on, on, up on Hall Avenue, Ted, there's one side yes. of the road. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. uh, it's a beautiful Over. sugar maple. Now, how old is that sugar maple? Well, well we, we think, don't know the date, but I'll let Ted think about that one. We think it's probably about the same age as the walnut, because they're usually planted at the same time when they do their planting. So that's, that's it's probably right in one, the ballpark. 150. Now, how did these two wonderful trees get on this property? I mean, they, did, they don't sell seed, do they? No, no. those are definitely planted by somebody. Yeah. Do you think this was farm area or was it just, because I know they, don't, they didn't tre plant trees 200 or 150 years no, ago for yeah. ornamental use. Well, I think this was probably a specific area where someone did plant the trees. Okay. Someone had a vision. For a feature. These someone are, these had are a vision. feature trees. Yeah. Uh, so. Someone had a vision 150 years ago and they, they didn't think that we'd be here standing here today looking at them. No. I, ho I hope these trees last another 150 years. Now, what type of maintenance do they require to keep them in good health? We do a lot of pruning. We go through the trees, look for any uh, large deadwood so that you don't get uh, fungus and any disease going into the, the heart of the tree. Sapwood, uh, storm damage. Uh, big trees like this, we do some weight reduction because the branches get so heavy that we, we bring them in a little bit to uh, reduce some of the weight. Kevin's done a great job on this walnut tree. When did you do that, Kevin? We did it uh, probably three months ago, uh, probably March or April we did that. These are great trees. Uh, they said Kevin's done a great job preserving those, and we're, we're going to keep an eye on these trees. And, and well, we're, not, we're not going to let anybody else cut any more trees down in this on this property. On this property, Unless yeah. they're very, very dead. Yeah. Our next tree that we have slated that might be an issue is that ash tree on the corner over there. All right. I, uh, we have, there is a lot of dead wood in that tree, um, but uh, we, we do have hopes that should be out within another month. Obviously, that's the first to lose its leaves, mm -hmm. and it's the last to get the leaves in the spring. Mm -hmm. And so, the ash tree can be deceiving. Yeah, you yeah. say, oh, that, that, that tree's dead. Well, wait, wait, <laughs> wait a, a month. while. Yeah. It's just so. like the weather. If you don't like it, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thank thank you. Thank you. Enjoy this one wonderful spring that we're having. Yes. Thank you. And, okay. Uh, and uh, uh, if you could do any tree work, Always consult a certified tree arborist. Absolutely. New certified arborist through the New Hampshire Arborist Association. We've all taken a, a test. We've all have the experience, proper insurance and equipment. And if there's ever a, a doubt, ask for their certification number. They can go to the New Hampshire Arborist Association website and it'll give a complete listing of everybody. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Hey, I grabbed a couple of spectators here at today's event. Uh, this is... Jim Cusdrow. And? And Harriet. And Harriet Cusdrow. And, and you live in oh, Nashua? Yes. Also known as Harriet Winchester, because I sign all my paintings as Harriet Winchester. Oh, you're an artist. I am. What type of an artist? Um, I did pastel for 22 years, uh -huh. and I got very interested in, the, in big trees and how many of them we've lost. Thinking about the Appalachian Trail parts of that at one time were one out of four trees was mm -hmm. an American chestnut mm -hmm. and as big like this and they're all gone and so I thought I would start painting more trees and then when I'm showing my paintings at an art show I can sort of proselytize for trees and talk about them. How did yeah. you find out about today's event? Newspaper. In the newspaper and the telegraph. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. So Saw it in the Telegraph, and I said, "That, that, that I've got to go to." <laughs> Absolutely. Well, when we first moved here in the early '60s, 
uh, Amherst Street was just a two-lane road uh -huh. between yeah. where I live and and, 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 here and Amherst. There was yeah. only one signal light at exit yeah. 7. Yeah. And all that Amherst Street yeah. was all lined with Dutch elm trees. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. They're I remember all gone. the, the commer few commercial establishments. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Supposedly, there's a pretty big elm tree left on Broad Street near the Hollis Line. I'm gonna go out and. Oh, it's over in the corner of Coburn Woods, uh, Coburn Avenue. I think so. In front of the, you know, by the church, right where they, right where they put the oval in. Oh, is that where? I it is? think it is. I think that's where I, it is. Because there's an old farmhouse. I know there's a big tree. I know there's a big tree there, but I would have said it was. More like an oak. Well, I could be wrong. I'm not up on my trees. <laughs> I just I'm I do just more learning. perennials than anything else. I'm just learning. I, there's uh, all the tree books out of the library. Yeah. Now I'm going around and and if I can reach them, looking at all of the buds and mm -hmm. and looking at how they open and the little beginning maple seeds. Yeah. Check out some of the homes in the north end of Nashua. They have some very very large old trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, Linda Temperino, and I am now with Lois Scoto. Lois is a member of the Nashua Garden Club, former president of the Nashua Garden Club, and chairperson for this year's plant sale. When is the plant sale, Lois? The plant sale is on Saturday, May 18th, here at the Historical Society, Nashua Historical Society, 5 Abbott Street. Uh, it will be on from 8 o'clock in the morning until noontime. So please come, we're gonna have a lot of beautiful stuff on sale from our members' gardens. We'll have some annuals, we'll have vegetables, we'll have herbs. We have uh, some dogwood trees that we got from the state forestry uh, system that we'll be selling. So come one, come all, and, and, and a bake sale. And it's rain or shine. Yes, it's rain or shine. And are you still doing the recycling bins? Uh, no, not this year. <coughs> okay. This year we will not have, the, but we will have raffle, we will, we will be raffling off uh, gift baskets for people. So we have members who are making gift baskets of different types, and we'll be raffling those off this year. Wonderful. Okay. And again, the date's on that? The date is Saturday, May 18th, here at the Nashua Historical Society, from 8 o'clock in the morning till noontime. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. for joining us today and please visit again for our next adventure beyond the garden gate. <laughs>